Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing QS16 in the 15-minute pool on ICC. This player from Iceland is rated 1802. Let me check their stats real quick. Wow, lots of 15-minute games. Almost 8,000. Peak rating of 1875. They open with E4. What shall we play today? Let's play a French defense. Not a line I played very often in the 15-minute category, or in any rating category, or time control category on online. I do feel like the French fits my style, though, so I don't mind experimenting with it a little bit. Hmm, knight f3. So knight f3 gives me the option of c5, taking play into a Sicilian, but I'll stick with d5. The usual stuff, and he's going to exchange, okay. Yeah, and now we're playing the exchange variation. So there's a couple ways to handle this for black. I think I'm going to try to play this one in an aggressive way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with bishop d6, and I'm going to look to play bishop g4. Oh, <laughs> there goes that plan. But I was going to play bishop g4, queen d7, knight c6, and castle queenside. That's a setup that black can employ. But now that he's played h3, he's denying me the use of the g4 square, so probably f5 is the next best square. I could play bishop f5 straight away. I could also develop this knight. I think I'm going to play bishop f5 right away. Just to preempt white's bishop coming out. They still might come to d3 like so to offer an exchange. But here I can play, for instance, knight e7 if I want. If I play knight e7 and we trade, and then white plays, say, queen d3 or maybe even queen e2 check. Yeah, but I can always play queen e7 if necessary. Okay, so let's do this. I remember a piece of advice for black in the exchange French that said that if white commits the knight to f3, it makes sense for black to put the knight on e7. So you can kind of respond asymmetrically like that, and sending the bishop to f5 is a nice perk of putting the knight on e7. It supports bishop f5. So white plays bishop g5. Now this creates the threat of bishop takes f5, but it looks like a shot in the dark because I can just play f6 here and kick that bishop away. And I weaken the e6 square slightly in doing this, but I think that should be uh, a minor concern, let's say. Unless white is able to put a knight in on e6, uh, I'm not going to have too much trouble covering this square, and knight g5 is not going to happen with my pawn here. f4 is covered by my bishop, so there's not really an accessible route to the e6 square for a white knight. So yeah, I don't believe that white should waste a tempo inducing f6 like they're doing here. Okay, now he takes on f5. I don't really want to take on g5 and allow white to save the light square bishop, so let's just recapture. And see where white puts that dark square bishop. Probably they go. They got to go all the way back to d2 or c1. Maybe they'll put it on e3. It is defended, but it doesn't look too impressive there. Yeah, and he goes all the way back to d2. All right, so I have flexibility to develop as I please now. Rook e8 is the first move that came to mind, just to take the file. I could also bring out a knight. I could play knight bc6, for instance, and attack the pawn on d4. But I may want to play rook e8 and develop the knight through d7. Maybe go knight d7 to f8 to g6, send it over to the king side. That looks pretty flexible, so I think I'll do it. Maybe white will oppose me with rook e1, but... On the whole, I like starting with this move. Take the file. And white does play rook e1. All right, so now I'm thinking develop this knight. It seems like there's some promise in playing knight d7 based on that avenue. Knight f8 to g6 to the king side. Knight c6 blocks the c-pawn, so I'm a little less enthused about that. I might want to put the pawn on c6 to reinforce d5 instead. If knight bc6, probably white would play c3. Their knight is a bit stuck on b1, but I don't see how I kill him and take use of or make use of that extra tempo. I guess I could play knight e7, and I'm still getting over to g6. But somehow d7 seems like the superior square. Because I believe in the long run, I really want this pawn on c6. 
yeah, I mean, I could do something sharper here, but I'm quite content with knight d7, so I'm going to stick with that. And should white develop a knight to c3, I'll just play pawn c6, defending d5 and stopping knight b5. And I'll have a great pawn structure. Let's pre-move this move just in case they do decide to swap. Okay, he does play knight c3. So let's play pawn c6. If I were white, I would think about trading the rooks and then playing queen f1. Queen f1 would enable white to play rook e1 thereafter. And maybe queen d3 as well. So they got to look at how they're going to get the queen and also this queenside rook into the struggle. And that seems like a natural way to do it. Because as it stands, the queen can't come to e2. It's guarded by the rook. So it seems like if white wants to make progress here, they're going to have to trade the rooks sooner or later. Note that if g4 is ever played, I can just drop the knight back to e7, so I'm not concerned about that. Knight e2. So it looks like they're trying to make use of the f4 square with that move. Therefore, maybe I just play queen c7 here and deny them f4. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I, I'm thinking about even being more aggressive with g5 and trying to activate my kingside pawns, but that looks premature. I've got an easy move to make, queen c7, that also covers the f4 square and connects my rooks, so I'm just going to play that. Not a big fan of knight e2. I think knight e2 is the chess equivalent of telegraphing the pass. That's a basketball term. When you're looking to pass to someone, and usually what happens is you stare directly at the person you're passing to, and it becomes obvious to the defender who the ball is going to. So in chess, if your opponent makes a move like knight e2, where like the only forward option after that would be knight f4, or bishop f4 maybe, although bishop f4 maybe runs into rook takes e2, but regardless, a piece coming to f4, that's like telegraphing the pass. And you never want to make it too obvious to your opponent what you're up to. It's better to maintain a an air of um, mystery if you're able. Not that you have to like consciously do that at all times, but good players don't make moves where the threat is like easily stopped. Um, if they are playing a move that creates a one move threat, it's for like an auxiliary purpose. Like they know that it will be obvious to the opponent that the threat can be stopped, but they're like looking to maneuver the piece elsewhere or they have some other operation in mind. They're not just pinning all their hopes on that one obvious idea. So let's see what QS16 does. I mean, they can play queen c1 if they want to try to prop up a piece coming to f4. I do wonder if they might be overloaded on the e-file eventually. Like say white plays queen c1 and then follows with knight f4. I could play rook takes e1 check. And they don't really want to divert their bishop or their queen because that would mean one less defender on f4. So they'd have to play knight takes e1, but then the d4 pawn is loose. So that could create issues for them. I like the fact that I might be able to use the e4 square, by the way. Rook e4 is a move I'll consider because you know it's unusual to put a rook like that anchored in the center. But um, I thought it might be a good way to double up the rooks and also attack d4. c3 is a sensible move. I think that's a smart decision by white. Covering d4, enabling queen c2. Yeah, good move by them because otherwise they were having some issues with their coordination. Okay, so what to do here? I would like to double up on the e file, but... Well, maybe I can play rook e4. Actually, rook e4 is pretty tempting because it even blocks queen c2, doesn't it? Uh, and there's no knight c3 anymore. So white can't move the knight here to harass me. So maybe rook e4, idea to simply double up. If rook e4, knight c1, rook a e8. If ever they take, I can take with a pawn if I like. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, yeah, it looks good to me. Let's give it a shot. You don't often see rooks outposted like this. 
especially this early in the game. <laughs> That's usually more of the minor piece rolls, especially the knight. King f1 played instantly. Okay. So making way for the g1 square. Knight g1 maybe he has in mind. I'll probably still double up my rooks. I don't see any tactical stroke here. When your opponent makes a move like king f1, you might start looking for tactics. They're disturbing the natural order of their king side. Yeah, let's just double up here. I suspect knight g1 will be played. Now, I don't have to take on e1. I can uh, try to get white to be the one to take on e4. Because notice, this knight has no squares, actually. So let's say I play a move like queen b6 here. Just creating a threat on b2, maybe the threat of queen b5 or queen a6. Actually, that could be a significant threat, too. Perhaps that's not so comfortable for white to meet. What else could I do? Is there anything more forceful? Taking, I think they're just going to take with the knight, let's say. I don't see what I've gained. Sending in a bishop to h2 seems like a shot in the dark. I don't really see a follow-up to that. My queen has performed its function on c7, connecting the rooks and stopping that bishop f4 or knight f4 idea earlier. So yeah, let's, let's just probe them with this move. I like the multi-purpose nature of this. Queen takes b2 and also these check threats on b5 and a6. White plays queen c2 right away, but that's a big blunder. I don't think they saw queen b5 or queen a6, which should win me a pawn, uh, because they'd have to play c4 thereafter to block the check. Otherwise, coming to e2, they're going to lose material. So let me just think which square I want to check on. Probably a6, because b5, c4 comes with an attack on my queen. So that's probably what I'll do. I can insert a capture first, but I don't want my knight on f5 to be attacked by that white queen. So yeah, let's, let's go here, check. And they have to play c4. Any other move loses material, because they'd have to block on e2 instead, and I would just take with a rook. Yep, so c4 was played. All right, so now we know we can bake a pawn if we like. Just queen takes c4. And I will probably play that, unless I see something clearly better. Knight takes d4 does not work because of knight takes, rook takes, rook takes e8. Queen takes e4 on the other hand. Queen takes c4 on the other hand just seems to win a clear pawn. If I take with a pawn, there's rook takes e4. C3 check. King e1. That's not looking good for me. So yeah, let's just take this pawn. Let's do it. Check. And after queen takes c4, I won't take on e1. I think I'll just recapture. I like my rook on e4. If white wants to get rid of it, they're going to have to work to trade it. So this looks fine by me. Yeah, let's just pre-move this recapture, in fact. So we've succeeded in winning a pawn. I think White's trouble started, I don't know, right around when they played bishop g5. I think that whole operation didn't work out as well as White would have liked. Bishop g5 coming back to d2, because the bishop on d2 messed with their coordination, undeniably. Okay, bishop 2, d2. Covering d4, maybe opening up knight d2. Considering playing b5 in response to this, I'm also considering just taking on e1. Maybe taking on e1 is good. We are up a pawn, so we can look to swap. Yeah, and the fact that d2 is freed up and might come with tempo on my rook, or maybe they take first and then play knight d2 and go after c4, that makes me want to trade now. So I think I will Check. swap. It'd be nice to put a knight on d5 soon. Okay, so they play rook takes. Yeah, again, I can swap. I could also play king f7. But I think swapping is just Check. more to the point. So let's do that. Probably they'll take with a king. So I don't know that they want to misplace their bishop or their knight. And here I can activate my pawn majority with b5. 
I like the look of that, so I'll do it. So we've got a four versus three on the queen side. A3. Now let's go about trying to uh, probe him with our knights. So I'm thinking knight b6, whereupon I can come to either a4 or d5. I could also play knight e7 to d5, but for the moment, this knight looks fine here. So yeah, let's play this one. I also may advance the kingside pawns, like g5 could be handy in gaining space at some stage. So we can't roll that out either. This is a bad piece for white. It's guarding b2 and d4, but in doing so, it's just performing the function of, uh, I don't know, like a big pawn almost. Although a pawn on c3 wouldn't be guarding b2, but it's a pretty lame bishop on this square, let's say. All right, so knight d2. They can come to e4. That is an active possibility associated with this move. They do slightly weaken d4 in playing this. I think to start just bringing up the king would be smart. I'd like to play like this knight to d5 and send this one into a4. That would be a nice little plan. So I could start with one of those moves. Yeah, actually, let's start with knight a4. Because that creates the threat of taking, and then after b takes, taking on a3. So maybe this is just a good idea. Yeah, we'll leave open the d5 square for the other knight. Okay, so that knight comes in. Now, I probably want to preserve this bishop. However, I could take on c3. But if I take c3, I think they're going to take d6. And then after I take, they take. Uh, but then I have 94, but they have 92. Okay, so I guess they cover in that case. So let's maybe just play bishop e7. Yeah, because knight takes c3, knight takes d6, knight takes d6, pawn takes c3. Looks like white covers everything. So they're just in time. All right, the knight comes up to help reinforce. Let's just bring our king up a little bit. I am under five minutes, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. Remember, in endgames, there's no rush most of the time, especially when you have the advantage. You should feel comfortable just improving your position oftentimes, turning the screws, not feeling like you have to win immediately or you have to exploit your extra pawn ASAP. So your advantage is usually not going to run away anywhere, so take your time. Now, since this is a game with no increment, I can't afford to take my time forever. <laughs> but if there was, say, a 30-second increment, I might uh, play a few extra moves to gain time on the clock or just see if my opponent makes a mistake before embarking on a decisive plan. That's a common strategy. I still would like to get at white's weak pawn. So, you know, like B2, D4, all of those pawns are weak. I feel like at some point I might be able to favorably play this knight take c3 move. White's knight on e2 is covering, though. But note that if they play, like, knight f4, a move that looks active, then I could take on c3. And if white takes with a b pawn, they would lose a3. And if they take with a knight, they would lose d4. So this knight is kind of glued to the e2 square for now. King f7 is exactly the type of move you should get in the habit of playing in the end game. Just unhurried. In almost every variation, it's better to have my king closer to the center than it is just sitting back on g8. So this is just a judgment call that I'm, I'm making a move that can only help my position. The value of the king goes way up in the end game because there's often no danger to the king coming out as far as getting checkmated. So you should use the king and its fighting ability, uh, which in a middle game is not apparent most of the time and not relevant. Okay, g3, kind of a patient move. Maybe g5. I could play king e6, but then they get knight f4 with check. So I'm thinking g5 might be good just to rule out any 
Knight F4, future threats. Yeah, let's do that. Again, another move we can play pretty easily without much thought. It just gains space. Okay, so now I'm thinking bring the king up. Now that knight f4 is not a concern. Yeah, let's do it. White's bringing the king to c2. Okay. So I can play the king all the way to d5. Let's do it. I mean, I think at... Uh, at minimum, it's going to force knight e2 or f3, which is a weakening move. Weakens the e3 square. More likely, I want my knight on d5 rather than the king, but I don't see any harm in playing this way. Maybe I can attack d4 by playing like bishop d8 to b6, keep my king on d5, and have my king, knight, and bishop all converging on this point. White might play g4 at some point, though, to kick this knight away. So we can't be completely oblivious to that. b3, what the... <laughs> Why would you do that? So if I take the pawn, you're going to play king d3? Is that what you're telling me? And guard the knight? Because right now I can just take your knight. Okay, I mean, there's no no way this move can be good, but let's just think about our options for a second. Uh, knight takes c3, they're going to take with a knight check, probably, or, or I guess this knight. So we're not going to play that. We're either going to take on b3, or we're going to take on e4. If we take on e4, they take a4. Uh, we can take a3, or we could even just take back. But somehow I like taking b3 with check better. Because take b3 with check, king d3, bishop takes a3. That just looks really good but then again king takes we get our king in closer to the action as well which also looks strong and tempting huh baffling stuff <laughs> all right i'm gonna play king takes e4 actually i like the the king activity i'm garnering out of this maybe even king f3 after he takes a4. I mean, a3 is going to be weak regardless. So maybe we can march all the way in with our king. Attack the knight. Attack the pawn on f2. Yeah, I think after b takes a4, there's a couple different good moves. But I'm leaning towards king f3. Yeah, let's do it. As I was saying, king activity. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing this just to make a point, but this is the sort of thing you, you want to get used to doing in an endgame. I'm not in fear of getting checkmated here, even though my king is leading the charge. White doesn't have enough pieces to weave a mating net in their current position. If these pieces were more coordinated, maybe, but you know, White's not able to... Uh, set up even more than a check or so with one of these pieces. Yeah, so F2 is hanging, A4 is hanging, A3 is hanging. If I get a choice, I'll probably take A3. But first I want to see what white does with the knight. Not many great options at White's disposal. B3 was totally crazy, though. I don't know why they played that move instead of just knight d2 or something. Both getting a little low on time, but not too bad. 2 minutes 40 seconds for me. We're in a vastly simplified position. Okay, so they move the king. Probably bishop takes a3. Yeah, let's do this one. Okay, now I'm thinking come here and try to set up knight e4. So knight e4 check. d5, he wants knight d4. But I do not believe this will work. Let's first play knight e4 check. Uh, 
Maybe I get my king in some difficulty if I do that. Because knight e4, king here. c5 was the other move I was considering. Huh. Knight e4 check, though. King e1, is that really that big of a deal? Knight takes c3. Takes here. I can come back. That should be winning. Yeah, let's do that. Check. I think that's a pretty clear-cut win. So king e1, knight takes c3. And if he takes c6, I can play like knight d5. Just bring this back. Yeah. This should not be a problem. And here, bishop b4 was my intended move. And we're going to get back in time. If he takes here, we take check, and then bishop e5 or bishop a5. Okay, king there, so I think we could just take here. It's fine. White's still pinned. If they take b5 with the pawn, we have d4. White resigns. All right, so I believe White's setup was awkward in the opening. This whole operation with bishop g5, inducing f6, and then coming back to d2 didn't pan out for White. Also, I think knight e2 was too obvious what White was up to, because after queen c7, they just experience coordination problems and it seems like they maybe missed queen a6 or queen b5 and this idea of winning a pawn and forcing white to play c4 and then it was converting the end game up a pawn hereafter let's go back and have a quick look though so the french defense if white intends to play the exchange variation they should play d4 d5 take right away because then they have more flexibility they haven't moved their knight yet because there are some lines where like the knight might might want to come to e2. Or I have seen setups even with bishop d3, queen f3, knight e2. Getting the queen out aggressively. So I think if you're an exchange French player, then playing knight f3 on move 2 isn't optimal. I wouldn't play the exchange French, by the way. I think it's pretty toothless for white. It's not a great theoretical challenge to black at all. So white played h3, but had they not done that, like say they played bishop d3... I was thinking about playing bishop g4 and then doing a setup like like this. Uh, let me just make some moves. And I don't think these are necessarily the best moves, but uh, just to illustrate the setup. Black can castle queenside and try to make it a sharper exchange French game. Opposite side castling. This is a line I've just seen recommended in French books over the years. And here you... You spurred the usual idea of putting the pawn on c6 in favor of putting the knight on c6 to speed up your development so you could whisk your king away to the queen side. So as played, white played h3, and I just developed the bishop to f5, and then played knight e7. Yeah, and I don't think this is a good idea, bishop g5. I think white needs to find some better way of deploying their pieces. Maybe just rook e1 to start which in some cases could threaten rook takes c7, removing the defender of f5. So that looks like a sensible move to begin with. There's no reason to just send the bishop out when it doesn't have a great available square. After f6, he could play bishop h4, but given that my bishop is covering g3, maybe he was hesitant to do that. Instead, he traded and then brought the bishop back to d2. I feel like black is already a little more comfortable. I think if I turn on the engine here, it's going to say the position is close to equal, but it might give black a hint of an advantage, like, you know, one-tenth of a pawn or something. Maybe um, five-hundredths of a pawn or something. Let's take a look. Yeah. So not much, but enough for us to say that white has not uh, impressed out of the opening, and black is totally comfortable here and maybe can look towards taking the advantage. My development's easier. This bishop is clearly misplaced. There's more question marks about white setup than there is about blacks here. So That said, it doesn't like rookie 8, but 
I mean, rookie eight looks entirely normal to me. So rookie one, I played knight d7. Now I was talking about how I wanted to refrain from playing knight c6 because I might want to put my pawn here, which I think is fine. The engine wants to play c4, interesting move. So is the idea queen c2 after that to try to fork the knight and the pawn? Seems so. Yeah, c4 is not a move I thought about. I don't think black really has to be concerned about this idea too much, but that's an active move if white can play queen c2 and regain the pawn. There are certain weaknesses I have on the light squares, that's for sure, like this diagonal. So I was conscious of that. Like I didn't want white's queen to come out to b3 at an inopportune time and take advantage of this diagonal. Instead, he played knight c3, and I was happy to put the pawn on c6. And that was kind of criticizing knight e2. I don't know if um, knight e2 itself is, is that bad. It just seems like kind of a short-sighted operation to me. Like, if the knight is not coming to f4, what else is it going to do? And after queen c7, I don't see knight f4 being played anytime soon. Maybe they should play, like, knight c1 to d3. And the position is still acceptable for white, but they started going wrong here. They played c3, and I played rook e4. The engine does not like this move either so much. It says better is g6. Why g6? g6 looks weird. Why would I play pawn to g6? Give the knight g7 for some reason? Huh. I mean, knight f8 is another natural looking move I could play. Try to bring the knight over. What specifically does it dislike about rook e4? Ah, it's back to this c4 move again. Not an operation that my or my opponent, me or my opponent considered. I don't believe. Yeah, so again, I guess the idea is if I take queen c2, rook a8, queen Check. takes c4, king f8, okay. g4, knight e7, knight c3. Positions roughly equal, according to the computer. White's kind of out of the woods. Maybe they're even a tiny bit better. Huh. Rook e4 felt good at the time, but... Yeah, c4 seems like a nice cure to blacks, or to white's problems that they're experiencing. Kind of a hard move to consider, though. I'm not surprised that we both missed it. So they played king f1 instead, and I just doubled up. Now it looks good for black. Now that I'm doubled up and I have a lot of firepower on the e-file... White's going to have a harder time freeing himself. Note that c4 would just probably blunder a pawn because after knight b6, my rook on e4 is already defended. So queen c2 is not coming with a double attack. What if g4, though? Ah, I can put the knight on h6, okay. Yeah, because I was wondering if g4 at some stage could break the coordination between the two rooks because e7 would be the natural square, but here I would lose the rook. This one's no longer communicating with it. So he played knight e to g1. So probably it's most accurate to say that white's true problems occurred maybe with c3 and especially with king f1. Seems like all the way up through here, their position's fine, especially in view of this c4 idea. But yeah, like king f1 especially looks... I don't know how to describe this move. It's kind of passive. And also it's... Um, it encourages me to look for tactics, especially on this diagonal. And it's not a move that uh, white really wants to be playing, especially especially since their position was acceptable prior to this. I mean, it kind of helps in the defense of E1, but it creates tactical problems on this diagonal. So... Yeah, it's, it's telling that right here, the engine for a second said that king g1 was the best reply. Doesn't like the king on f1, so king g1 is better to play. So instead, this was played, and now I played this queen b6 move. I'm, I'm happy with this move. I like the dual nature of this, threatening the checks on a6 or b5, and also threatening the pawn on b2. Yeah, and this move allowed Check. me to play queen a6 and win the pawn. So can white save himself at all here? G4 can be played. That frees up a square for the king to come to G2. So yeah, that's a start. And also attacks my knight. Knight E7. 
Rook takes e4, pawn takes e4, knight h4. I guess if I ever take here, they do have rook b1. Maybe they can come after b7, although I do win a2, don't I? The engine just wants Check. to trade queens with queen b3 and play this end game. Well, black's up a pawn here too, though. Maybe not as bad as the game, because white structure is at least intact on the queen side and in the center. Yeah, it's bad for, for white already after queen b6. They're significantly worse. Queen Check. c2 didn't help matters after this. Okay, so Check. here I just swipe the pawn. Queen takes c4. Knight b6. I don't recall if I looked at this move. I wish I had, though. That might be a good way to increase the pressure on c4. Not take that pawn yet. I was just content with winning it and playing the end game. But yeah, knight b6 makes sense, too. Wish I would have looked at that. Check. So I did this. Yeah, I wasn't swapping because I felt like my rook was fine on e4. And if white voluntarily traded, then they would have to deal with the threat on d4 as well. This end game is probably a technical win for black. You're not going to be saving this most of the time if your opponent's a good player. So. Check. Check. So we traded off all the rooks. Now I felt okay about trading because, as I described with bishop c3, white's freeing up the d2 square for their knight. And maybe that could be a double attack on the rook and the Check. pawn. So I figured Check. just trading down is fine now. And then I played b5, supporting the c4 pawn, also introducing b4. I can try to play to trap that dark square bishop. I'm not sure white should really move their queenside pawns. Like playing a3 just creates another pawn target on this square. Potentially all these pawns, d4, b2, and, and a3, could be a uh, point of tactical operation for black. So I play knight b6. It's intriguing that the engine instead wants me to play uh, knight f8. Maybe trying to come to e6 and just hammer d4. I could conceivably put my knight on e6 and then maneuver this bishop and go attack d4 from, like, b6, for instance. But sending the, knight, sending the knight to a4 also makes a good deal of sense, so... I think this is fine. Yeah, here I just dropped the bishop back. I did mention the line knight takes c3. In some ways, this is very tempting, because if white takes on c3 with the pawn, they would lose a3, and if they take with the knight, they lose d4. But I did not do it because they can play knight takes d6, attacking this knight. And then after take, now they take here. And I think this structure is a slight improvement over what they had with the pawn on b2. Because d4 is protected. a3 is isolated, but I think it's easier for me to attack d4 than it is to attack a3. This too also would be very much an uphill struggle for white to hold, but I didn't feel like I had to simplify the position that quickly. So I just dropped the bishop to e7. Yep, and then brought up the king. No rush, no hurry. Activate your king. you got to drill that into your head if you don't already have it. Uh, a5 is a suggestion of the computer. A little more dynamic. Yeah, so I guess the point there is if pawn ta uh, bishop takes, rather, then I win b2. And then a3 is weak, and my knight can also come to d3. And oftentimes, I think with a5, I'm threatening to go b4. So yeah, that's that's a nice move as well, a5. But no harm, no foul in bringing up the king. Now, the problem for white is there's not really much to do here. As white in such positions, you have to give up any hope of uh, being able to like fight your way out of this. You just have to sit back and wait for an opportunity to counterattack. White's not going to have anything unless I give it to him. Um counterplay wise hence i think white is losing here almost certainly but if you're like a savvy defender you might be able to find a way to complicate the position at a certain moment white's best chance to do that would be to force me to some sort of semi-difficult decision like offer material like try to give up another pawn at some stage to activate your pieces and seeing if black goes for that it, it's not a um, it's not a situation you want to be in, obviously, but there is kind of an art to playing lost positions. 
So white played g3. I played g5, maybe an unnecessary move, but I liked it because it stopped knight f4. I wanted to bring my king up. Again, the computer thinks this a5 idea is very good, and I'm inclined to agree because b4 is coming so quickly. I just didn't think about a5. So g5, white played king d1. I brought up my king. King c2. Yep, and king d5. King is a fighting piece. So yeah, here I was shocked they didn't play knight d2 or maybe f3. They instead played b3, which just ignores the threat on e4. Let's say they had played f3. There were some ideas I was playing around with. Like I mentioned possibly doing this to try to go to b6 and attack d4. So I would have seriously thought about that. Also, maybe I would start pushing more pawns like h5. Uh, a5 isn't going to work anymore because bishop takes a5 and white's covering b2. I think I like bishop d8 best, though, because there's there's a couple of uh, ideas in mind. That bishop b6 idea. Also, maybe I can bring my king back and play knight e7 to d5 and reroute that piece. So I probably would have played that. Yeah, instead white did this, and I took on e4. It was a close call between taking here and taking here. Check. If I took b3, white would have to play king d3 to save this piece. And I'm sure there's multiple good moves for black here. B2 the engine likes. Just threatening to queen. Knight D2. Bishop takes A3. Yeah, that's a couple extra pawns pretty cleanly. But I took on E4. I like this king activity I was getting. Now I went in further with the king. Nothing wrong with bishop takes A3 as well. But I wanted to attack this and this first. King D2. Now I took on A3. G4, I played knight d6. Should white play knight g1 check, I can just take on f2, so that's not a problem. Yeah, now white tried to um, get something going with d5, freeing up the d4 square for the knight and also attacking f6. Bishop takes f6 is not really a threat because of knight e4. I mean, this is the type of move you got to look for if you're white. And now they're just dead loss, so I don't fault them at all for playing it. Um, I mean, you might lose faster, but at least he's giving himself a chance versus just allowing himself to lose all his pawns. Check. So, yeah, I went knight e4 check. White's king has to stay close to the knight. Yeah, now I can take here, and this is losing for white. King d1 would be very similar, I'm sure. On king d1, I probably would have taken here, because after check. knight d4, I can do this. There's no king on e1 to guard it. And this is also crushing. It's just too many pawns. So instead, this happened. If d takes c6, I could. I had knight d5 in mind, just coming back to stop knight c7. Ah, yeah, there's this move too, setting up discoveries on the white king. So if c7, we can play knight d5 check. Check. Discover check, and then go pick up the pawn. So white did this, and then we pinned. Yeah, again, we're not worried about the pawn going because we check and then always come back in time. Either here or here. Stop the pawn's progress. And white resigned. Okay, so a fairly instructive game, I think. Don't worry if you're a French player about playing the against the exchange variation. It's just a fact of life if you play this opening. Um, you know, I play the Slav defense, and I also have to fight against the exchange Slav. There's still plenty of pieces on board. Just because you trade one pair of pawns does not make the position drawish. There's this conception that, uh, you know, oh, I don't want to play the French because white can just take on d5 and the position's symmetrical and we're just going to draw. <laughs> uh, in my experience, that doesn't really happen too often. The players that you guys who are watching uh, this video and even my opponents, they're not good enough to, like, force a draw with white. So... Even if they're playing the exchange variation, it autom it doesn't automatically mean that the game is going to end in a handshake draw. So don't at all feel feel uh, uncomfortable when facing this opening, like you have to prove yourself and win or something, or um, play too dynamically. Just play the position, see what it offers. Yeah, I didn't do anything exceptional here. White just kind of made it awkward for themselves with this setup. Yeah, and I think their position really got bad after they played king f1 and knight g1. They lost a pawn after this, and maybe if White had noticed c4, 
they had a chance to liven up the game and uh, equalize. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back again soon with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.